Hey, uh, Simon, thanks for um, five videos in response to uh, that article I sent you. Uh, I didn't particularly like it that much myself. Um, I just found it worth reading just to get a grasp on the contemporary state of uh, theoretical physics. And um, maybe it was just poorly written, and maybe if I actually looked at the scientific journals and read, you know, uh, volumes and volumes of um, theoretical physics papers published in the last, I don't know, 10 years, I would have a completely different conception of what's going on, um, but I can't do that. Um, so this is all I, I've got, you know, in, in the few popular books that I've read about physics. Um, but in general, I think I agree with your uh, your frustration because there certainly is a lot of uncertainty. Um, the Big Bang model does seem to explain most of the data that we have collected, but it certainly is in contradiction with some other data, though it may be um, at least comparatively speaking marginal to the massive amounts of data which have shown us uh, or provided evidence to support the Big Bang Theory um, but certainly it could be wrong and that is the nature of all scientific theories I think um, they're ultimately hypotheses they're not uh, facts they are constructions uh, around which experiments can be uh, designed to test and through testing we can come to understand when our, any particular theory um, could be wrong. We can't design an experiment, however, to prove that a theory is right. Uh, as far as, as I can tell, we never will be able to do that. It's sort of, well, you could say a limit to human scientific knowledge, but this is, of course, uh, missing the point, because I, I don't think it's so much a limit. Um, I see it as forcing us to redefine what we thought knowing really was. And notice I didn't say knowledge. Not, knowledge implies having something. Um, whereas I think knowing is a process. Um, it's what it means to be alive, to be an organism. Um, single cells, um, bacterium, um, uh, any, any, any life um, is actively aware of a world. Now we can't say the world knowledge isn't representational as they say in cognitive science knowledge knowledge is participatory knowledge is an action it's something we do sensation you know or perception these words imply just you know passively sitting back and receiving a pre-made externally objective independent world that we just pick up and reorganize and respond to and certainly we respond to how our body is perturbed by energy which exists independently of our own autonomy but we have that autonomy uh, our sensation what our consciousness perceives the world with but you know we have to be careful with perceives because it implies to receive which we want I'm trying to get away from um, when we perceive we're participating our act of observation is co-creating or co-constituting the world which is observed and see I, I this is where we agree Simon we just arrive at it uh, by way of a different route, or at least I don't want to assert that there is a reality independent of our observation, 
that is a superpositional um, you know, wave function. I don't think quantum physics has told us um, that such an uh, assumption or, or a hypothesis is warranted. I think what quantum physics tells us is possibly far more radical, that we can't know in principle because knowledge is an activity. Um, to experiment on subatomic particles, we must interfere. We must help to uh, stir them up in such a way that they reveal themselves. Otherwise, otherwise what? Otherwise, we don't have knowledge. Uh, we don't have knowledge uh, enough even to say that there's something out there that we don't know. We can't even say that. Uh, and I think in response to this, I mean, we can either be driven insane, uh, you know, by the, by the, the mind-shattering implications and, and become sort of anxious about just what it is that this, this subjective state that we experience could be if it's not reality, if it's somehow obscuring the truth of the matter, we can never reach the outside and you can almost feel like you're trapped in this body. And I don't think that's um, a healthy way of responding to the situation. Our science should not lead us into anxiety. It should lead us uh, into freedom, a deepening understanding, a deeper understanding of our embodiment as reality shouldn't alienate, alienate us from that reality and in order to avoid alienation I think we have to sort of get ourselves out of this trap where we assume there, that there is an objective independent world out there that we can't know because of the uncertainty principle I don't think that's what the uncertainty principle is saying I think it's saying knowledge was always and will always be something uh, we do. Knowing is a way of participating not only with nature, but with other people, other scientists. You know, science is a communal activity. It's a shared activity. In other words, if you can't say what you intuitively feel is true, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. Not for science. It can certainly count for, um, for art or for spirituality but not for science. And certainly, these things don't always have to be in conflict. But when we do science, it's a public enterprise where we share what we find about the world in which we live together. And if it can't be shared, it's something else. Nothing wrong with it, but it's something else, not science. Um, I'm going to stop now and try to watch what I have just said, and uh, maybe I'll make another video, but um, for now I'll leave it at this. Uh, thanks for your uh, extensive responses, Simon, and uh, I look forward to discussing this stuff with you in the future. Take it easy, man.